When a firm raises funds externally, how does it do so? Well, generally it uses debt, which we can think of as bonds or loans, and equity, which we think of as shares. What is the difference between debt and equity? Well, there are several differences. First, if we think about, say, bonds as debt, there's a scheduled repayment. So what does that mean? Contractually, the firm needs to pay off coupons or interest and principal. Whereas with equity, the firm could pay dividends, but it's not obliged to. It's at its discretion, and there's no fixed schedule at which it needs to pay off dividends. Secondly, if there's a default, what happens? Well, the debt holders, the bondholders, are the senior claimants after a default. What does that mean? They have the first rights to the cash of the firm. The equity holders are at the end of the queue. Also, when there's a default, the control of the firm changes. So before default, the shareholders control the firm, but after default, the debt holders essentially gain control. So essentially debt and equity are carving up cash flows in different ways, and they're also carving up the control of the firm in different ways. So when we think of debt and equity together, usually that's called the capital structure of the firm. So I want to start thinking about the capital structure and the differences between debt and equity in terms of a puzzle. So let's think about the following. The historical return on common stock is 13%. The historical return on corporate bonds is about 6%. Firms, of course, would like to borrow or raise funds at the lowest possible rate. And debt seems a lot cheaper than equity. 6% is way below 13%. Why not issue just debt? Why would you ever issue equity? Well, bonds are much safer than shares, right? They get paid off first. So the required return on bonds is lower. But what does that mean for the firm? If the firm is issuing debt, that means that they're giving up something which is safe. They're giving up safe cash flows. And what are they retaining? They're retaining risky cash flows. So in that sense, it's costly to issue bonds. And you can think of this as follows. The more bonds they issue, the more likely the firm is going to go bankrupt or enter financial distress. So this implies that issuing more bonds is actually hurting the firm, hurting its, the people who previously own shares and debt in the firm. It's making their claims more risky.